Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Bible story. Video. Hey guys, it's story time with Jaden on. What is today? Tuesday, May twelfth. It's Tuesday story time. I hope you guys are ready for the next two chapters of the Jesus Storybook Bible. I'm just listening to how I said that and then how you said it. I'm like, hello, everybody. I'm like, hey, it's another story. I'm like, I'm okay. enthusiastic. Yes. How do you have, I'm that, excited that, how you do you have that much energy? I'm tired. I want to go like. I had them working outside all day. We've been, after school, we've been shoveling mulch. and <laughs> They've been helping me with my red mulch in the garden. And he did a wonderful job. And we got Maybe Wendy's. Jumping. We yeah. got Wendy's instead of pork chops. We <laughs> got a special cheese. treat. Because um, I cannot eat pork chops and mashed potatoes, I would go, yeah! Oh, stop it. So, anyway, we hope you guys are doing well today and are ready for a story. I'm if you hot. come on and are watching, I see somebody's watching, message in the comments and let us know who you are. Because we can't see who's watching because it makes it more fun for Jaden. All right, you guys enjoy the story. Go ahead, Jaden. What's the next chapter? Oh. I'm waiting for the person to come. Well, maybe they might be a little behind in watching, so we'll go from there at some point. Go ahead and start. We know a live video, Mom, when you click it, you go immediately on to where it is. Sometimes. Go no. ahead and read. Um, Here, do you want me to hold it for you while you read? We might have to come a little bit closer to the camera. <laughs> oh, I just read it. <clears throat> Look at that face. Oh, no. Wait, there it is. What is happening? Okay, oh, I can't it's hard see. to see. You're going to have to go around the other side. Go around the front so you can read it. All right. Tell them what the title is. The Forgiving Twins. Twins of Babylon. Jacob had 12 sons, but all of his sons Joseph would have, but out, out of all of his sons Joseph was his favorite. One day Jacob gave Joseph a splendid new robe. It was beautiful and rich with all the colors of the rainbow, but it was but it made Joseph's brothers jealous. They wanted rich rich rainbow robes too. Like look at that. So that's that's him. Look at that gigantic rainbow robe. And look at them. They're wearing those green and then tan. Look at everyone. He's wearing like a rainbow robe. And everyone else is like, what do we get? We get nothing. <laughs> Caroline. So that is mm. Nevea and Gabriel. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Jaden can't wait for y'all to come over and play, especially on the trampoline, right? Yeah, soon I think you will allow to wait. But the trampoline's Maybe. not the trampoline's not gonna be fun. We're each gonna have to be on one side because it's a it's a five by five trampoline. So we're each gonna have to be on one <laughs> oh, side. Oh, six foot difference. <laughs> so we're gonna have to be going. On, this is the trampoline, and then this is us. So, dude, 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 let's play tag, dude, dude, dude. Okay, I'm in line with you. You tag. It'll still be fun. All right, keep going, Jaden. My mom, you got rid of my book. No, now we're on. I didn't. I think it fell. We'll find it. Just keep reading. <laughs> when to take, then to take matters worse, Joseph kept on having these special dreams. I dreamed I was the greatest. I was a king. Joseph told his brothers, and you all bowed down to me. That, I can't talk. Blah. Now, I'm sure you know, even if Joseph didn't, that telling your brothers things like that isn't a very good idea. Joseph's brothers hated him even more. 
they wanted to kill Joseph in his dream. And one day, that's exactly what they tried to do. They tore Joseph's rainbow robe off of him and sold him to slave traders for 20 pieces of silver. Wow. All we have is a rainbow robe and he had, like, some dreams. And then that's where this podcast is. The traders took Joseph to Egypt and made him into a slave. The brothers went home and lied to their father, telling him that Joseph was dead. That's the end of the dream. That's the end of that dream, or they thought. But they were wrong. God had a magnificent dream for Joseph. Joseph's life. And even when it looked like everything had gone wrong, God would use it all to help make the dreams, the dream come true. God would use everything that was happening to Joseph to do something good. Meanwhile, though things were not looking too good for Joseph in Egypt, <laughs> he was far from home and from his dad. Then he got blamed for something he didn't do. And even though he had done nothing wrong, he was punished and thrown in jail. But God had not left Joseph. Oh, I'm sorry, it's hard to get the camera. Just but it doesn't say what he did. It doesn't say what he did. What Joseph did? Yeah, when he, how he got in. Joseph did didn't do anything wrong. I know, but wh- how did he, it doesn't say how, how that happened. How he got into. Yeah, j- no, it said how. They, remember, they sold him into slavery. So the brothers sold him, and then they took him, and they, they put him in jail until they were ready to give him, like, a job to do. Okay, let's go ahead and show the next picture, and then we'll. Read. Mom, I can read while they can see the picture. Okay. okay, Mom, can you just do it how we used to do it? Well, how we've been the doing The problem is we're having to use a new um, camera thing, and it's not quite as big or good. Okay, go ahead. Because the other one wasn't working. One night, Pharaoh's king of Egypt... One night, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had a scary dream about thin cows... Gobbling up fat cows. What on all did it mean? He didn't know, but Joseph was a dream expert, so Pharaoh sent for him. It means a famine is coming, Joseph explained. There won't be enough food. Pharaoh was so pleased by Joseph's skill that he immediately took Joseph out of jail and made him a prince. That's that's really weird. It's like, okay, he tells what this dream means. It's going to be a famine. The next thing you know... He goes from jail to, That's right. Prince! Oh, now that makes sense. The thin cows eating the fat cows, because the fat cows is like the all the food they had, but then the thin cows is eating that up. I can tell dreams too. Is the next one from this book? Now back home, jo- no, I'm not oh, okay. here. Now back home, Joseph's brothers had run out of food and everyone was hungry. Hangry. God. You can come into the frame so people can no, see. Well, I said hangry and I started hangry. laughing. God's special fa- family. It says like famine and line Eiley. Well, what? Fam Eiley. Was in danger. If they didn't get food soon, they would starve to death. They were angry boys. So Joseph's brothers traded, traveled, not traded Egypt, not traded to Egypt to buy food. No, they traveled to Egypt to buy food. Then they came and knelt before the new prince. His brothers didn't know that the prince was Joseph, but Joseph knew who they were. Joseph's dream, the one about his brothers bowing down to him, was coming true. It's me, Joseph cried. When I saw it was, Joseph's brothers were afraid. They had wronged Joseph. They had sinned, and they knew it. Now Joseph would suddenly punch them. But Joseph looked at his brothers and 
eyes filled with tears even though his brothers had told him and hated him and he wanted him dead. In spite of everything, he didn't stop loving. Baby, I'm trying to get you into the camera. Who's the long one to be in the picture? Ain't it to be in the picture? Ain't it going to be? Ain't it going to be? Do I like anchovies? No. So that means I don't want to be in the picture. <laughs> I don't want to be in that anchovy screen. His heart, which they had broken, filled up with love, and Joseph forgave him. <laughs> Joseph threw his arms around them. Don't be afraid, he said. Behind what you were doing underneath everything that was happening, God was doing something good. God was making everything right again. Joseph didn't punish them. He rescued them. He brought God's special family to live safely with him in Egypt. One day, God would send another prince, a young prince, whose heart would break like Joseph. Like Joseph's. Like Joseph. Joseph. He would leave his home and his father. His brothers would hate him and he wanted him dead. He would sold for pieces of silver. He would be punished even though he had done nothing wrong. But God would use everything that happened to this young prince, even the bad things, to do something good, to forgive the sins of this of the whole world. Well, that was eleven minutes long. That's eleven minutes. It's okay, we got one more chapter. But mom, it might have only recorded six. Well, we're gonna hope that it records the whole thing. Okay. Because they haven't said anything else. They would have. Joseph and his brothers grew old and died. God to the rescue. Joseph. <sighs> Joseph and his brothers grew old and died, but their children. But their children's children stayed in Egypt, where they became a very large family. Later on, a new king began to reign. But this pharaoh didn't remember Joseph, and he didn't like God's people. He made them into a slaves and beat them and made them work harder and harder. This is where I am. God's people cried out to God to rescue them, and God heard them. He remembered his promise to Abraham. He would look after his people. He would find a way to set them free. One day, Moses was looking after his sheep when something caught his eye. A bush was behaving very oddly. It was flickering with flames, but the leaves weren't burning. He took a closer look. Moses, screamed the big voice. Moses! Moses! <laughs> Ming is going to be God, with a very big voice. Moses leapt back. The bush was talking to him. Mo I have heard, I have heard my people's cries, Ming said. No, say God. God. I have seen their tears, so I have come down to rescue them. Go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people free. Moses was afraid, but God said, I will be with you. I am, I am speaking the food. Yes! I've always wanted to do this. So Moses went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Moses began. God says, God Said the said Pharaoh, never heard of him. Moses kept going. God, the God says, let his people go free. Why should I do that? Why should I? Pharaoh said. Don't want to. Don't want to. 
which won't. So he didn't. So God gave Pharaoh ten warnings. He called plague wait plagues. Plagues. First, God turned the river Nile into blood. No one could drink the water. But still, Pharaoh would not let them go. This is the story of, um, like in that VeggieTales one, where it was actually the, uh, the, the water was juice, and I actually liked that. Like, it's juice instead of water. So God made frogs come hopping and leaping and jumping in your bed. Frogs in your head, frogs in your soup, frogs all over everywhere. Frogs! Make them go away, Pharaoh screamed. Then your pe people can go. So God took the frogs away. But Pharaoh changed his mind. You can't go, he said. Then God sent zillions of gnats. But still, Pharaoh said, no. So then God sent swarms of flies. Flies buzzing in your eyes, flies, and after that, sickness and horrible boils and huge hailstorms and a storm of locals. Then darkness, when it should have been day, until it seemed that the whole world, creation, and everything was coming undone, falling back in the darkness, emptiness, and nothing. But each time, Pharaoh said, make it stop. And then, and then I'll let him go. And each time when God made it stop, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, actually, no, you can't go. Finally, Moses warned Pharaoh, obey, obey God, or he will have to send the, the worst thing of all. Pharaoh just laughed. <laughs> So God said, The oldest boy in each family of Egypt must die. But my people are going to be safe. God told his people to take their best lamb to kill it and put some of its blood on the front door. When God passes over your house, Moses explained, God will see the blood and know that the lamb died instead of you. That night, it was just as God said, suddenly, piercing the darkness, echoing down the corridors of the palace, came a blood curdling scream. Pharaoh's oldest son had died. At last, Pharaoh did just what God said. Get out! Pharaoh shouted. Just go! And so that, so that very night, Moses and God's people fled out of Egypt and out of slavery. They were free at last. God's people would have always remembered this great rescue to call, and call it the Passover. But an even greater rescue was coming. Many years later, God was going to do it again. He was going to come down once more to rescue his people. But this time, God was going to set them free. Forever and ever. Very good. The next one is like part two of this, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, probably. The next one could be the next part. Because it doesn't fail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give it away? Doesn't Pharaoh go, oh my gosh, what's happening now? <laughs> Great job, Jaden. I'm so proud of you. That's a great job for you. 19 minutes! 19 minutes! I'm going to wrap it up right now. So, bye guys, bye. didn't Jaden do a great job? Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> I have stuff to go do. Here, pray with us. Let's thank God that He has always been there for us um, from way back when. All the way back to Moses and all the way back to Joseph, God was always there for them no matter what the circumstance. 
I don't think you'll be sold into slavery, and I also don't think you'll be um, having to lead a whole um, group of people out of Egypt, but um, no matter what God has, you can count on the fact that he's always going to be there for you. Even though we're stuck at home, he will set you free from your houses, I promise. Okay, just be patient. It better be soon because uh, I can't wait any <laughs> Look, ooh, the ooh. kids um, and Miss Caroline say, good job, Jaden. Never said right. Jaden. It could have been me. It could have been Ming. Good job, Ming. Ming. Right. Good job Jaden and Ming. Thank you, God, so much for your story, Lord, for just that your promise is always true. You've always been there for Joseph, for Moses, and you'll always be there for us. Help us to trust you with no matter our situation that you will always set us free from anything that traps us. We thank you for the plans that you have for us. And um, we love you. Help us to rest well tonight and have a great day tomorrow. All your children said, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen! Tomorrow night, guys, is a story time with Miss Vesta. Say bye, Gabriel. Bye, Caroline. Come over and play soon. Bye-bye. Wait. Can't they come over and play, like, six feet away? <laughs> Possibly. We'll talk. Maybe next week. We're finishing up school and some Social projects this week. Social distancing, people. <laughs> Social distancing! Good night. Bye. Say bye. Okay, I'm going to go. Wee! How far can 